Hey everybody, welcome back to another GMG review. We're back today with the part three of the Codex Cast Space Marines review. We're doing it legion by legion because this, I mean the first video just going over the core units and rules was almost two hours and yeah, was, I, th if there was eight of them, it would have been 20 minutes each so far for these. We're looking at 160 minutes, so another three hours of video, basically. Uh, it would have been a five hour long video, so I'm doing these one by one. So we're on to the word bearers now, and we're gonna jump in and um, take a look at their Legion traits. So what's their Legion trait? So now obviously, um, if you wanna see the core stuff, go check out the, the playlist, um, which is in the cards up here and you can see all of the, the core stuff. But basically when you pick your Legion, you get a trait that applies to everybody. You get a secondary that you can take, which I have checked matches these. So basically the rule in this chapter approved Warzone Nephilim thing that says ignore everything in your codex means ignore everything in your codex unless your codex is made after um, the Chaos Space Marine one. <laughs> the Chaos Space Marine one or later until again, this gets changed and then we may have to ignore everything all over again. But for now these match, so you're good to go. Um, and then you get Warlord Traits, a full set, a uh, full set of your own stratagems and relics on top of that. So now the Word Bearers, obviously they are the priests, they're the reason it all goes horribly wrong in the Imperium. Um, they're into these undispellable prayers that you have access to, tons of them. Uh, and as such, they have some cool profane zeal as their Legion trait. So each time a model with this trait makes a melee attack, if that model made a charge or heroically intervened, you can reroll the attack's hit roll. So just built in reroll to hit. So that means that you basically never have to waste your prayer from your priests on the one that lets everybody reroll to hit, because everybody just does it on the charge now. Um, you could use that prayer to make them reroll to hit afterwards, like when you're engaged in prolonged melee, but typically you're going to be charging. Uh, each time a model with this trait would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. On a 5+, plus, it's not lost. So not a base wound shrug, but a 5+, plus shrug against uh, mortal wounds, because you just believe it's not happening. And then you get your secondary, Exalt the Dark Gods. If you select this objective, keep an Exalt the Dark Gods tally. Add one of the tally every time a Word Bearer's unit in your army makes this action. Exalt the Dark Gods. One Word Bearer's infantry unit from your army can perform this action at the end of your movement phase. If it's wholly within six of the center of the battlefield, it's going to be in the middle. Word Bearer's Psyker's units can tend to manifest psychic powers while performing this action without the action failing. If the unit performing this action is a Word Bearer's Icon, Dark Apostle, or Master Possession unit, this attack action is complete at the end of your turn. So it just happens. Uh, in either case, the action is only completed if the unit's performing it within six of the center of the battlefield, and no enemy units are within six of the center of the battlefield. At the end of the battle, score two if you did it once, score five if you did it twice, score nine if you did it three times, and score 15 if it's four more. So all you gotta do is push the button four times, which means do the action. You can still do psych powers and be in the middle of the table. So if you can take the middle of the table uh, and hold it, you're gonna get 15. And it does go to 15 for four of them. And it's unstoppable in that if you're doing it with one of those characters, so an icon, word bearers, dark apostle, or master possession, then you're gonna get you're gonna get at the end of your turn. So just don't be in melee and do it, and you're fine. <clears throat> Uh, so Warlord Traits, the voice of Lorgar, your auras go up by three inches, excluding the ones from Psychic Powers. Uh, each time this Warlord chants a prayer or uses an ability in your command phase that specifies a range, add three inches to the range of the prayer or ability. Uh, Exalted Possession, your Warlord gains the Demon and Demonkin keyword, gets a four plus on vol against range attacks, you'll have a five plus built in from being Demonkin. Um, add one of the Strength Attacks and Wounds characteristic and add two to your move. So like, you're kind of a a demon prince, but you're not quite a demon prince. You're just like slightly possessed, which is pretty rad because you're thinking about who would you give that to? Let's say a Terminator Lord, or actually, I'd give it to the Dark Apostle maybe, or the uh, Master Possession. Lord Discordant doesn't really need it, and if you did, it would take him above nine wounds, which you don't want. So, like someone like um, a Dark Apostle or a. Terminator Sorcerer Lord, because then he'd be strength up to his five with seven wounds. Master Possession, he's kind of a baby hero, so it doesn't super make sense, but a Terminator Lord even. Yeah, they're probably the best candidates. Uh, then Demonic Whispers. Each time this Warlord chants a prayer that's heard, uh, completes an action or a psychic action or manifests a psych power roll D6. If the result's greater than the current battle round, gain a command point. So that means that if you're going to be doing Exalted Dark Gods and your Warlord does it, right, because that's a psychic action uh, or action, you'd be able to get a command point at the end of the round. So not only are you getting 
VPs, you're also running command points. Demonic Whispers and Exalt the Dark Gods are a definitely a, a cool combo. Master of the Union, in your command phase, you can select one friendly word bearer's demon cane unit within six of this warlord until the start of the next command phase. Add one of the strength characteristic of models in that unit. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, improve the AP by one. Uh, Diabolist, each time this, uh, an attack is made against this warlord, your warlord cannot reroll the wound roll, so your opponent can't reroll wounds against you. And each time a warlord would lose a wound on a five plus, the wound's not lost. That's great. Hate Fuel Demagogue. In your command phase, you can select one friendly word bearer's unit within six of the warlord, and until the start of your next command phase, if that unit's a cultist, it gains let the galaxy burn, and models in that unit are considered to have the Heretic Astraeus keyword for the purpose of that ability. Um, and then each time a model in that unit makes an attack, if your army is engaged in want, destruction, or massacre, that unit's considered to be in slaughter instead. So you can push back to the middle for your um, attacks. <clears throat> so, key ones in here, obviously, Demonic Whispers pairs really well with this. Uh, but you're looking at then having your Warlord be a baby wood. Remember, you can have multiple Warlord traits, though, from the core... Um, where is it? The core stratagems. There's <laughs> so much in here. There's, like, this is the thickest rule section ever in a 40k codex, and I can't believe I'm having to do all of these videos. Uh, requisition, um, Gifts of Chaos. <clears throat> uh, no, this one. Aspiring Lord. So for a CP, you could buy off having Demonic Whispers, and you'd basically get that CP back by doing uh, Exalted Dark Gods. So you could take, let's say, a Dark Apostle, give him Demonic Whispers, stick him in the middle, and have him um, earn back your CPs every round while he's doing that trait. And remember, he can still do Psych Powers on top of that. I'm pretty sure Dark, Dark Apostle is still a Psyker. Master Possession. You can get to Master Possession because he's both. He's Psych Power. I think the Dark Apostle is a Priest, actually. Yes, he's a priest. So the apostle's pretty cool, but you could also do master possession and then do psych powers on top of it, which might be handy. Yeah, because the dark apostle or the master possession can do it. So some cool combos in there. And then your own stratagems, curse to spoilers. Uh, for two CPs, use stratagem in your shooting phase. When a word bearer's core or demon can from your army um, that's engaged in wanton massacre, is selected to shoot. Select one enemy unit within 12 of that unit and in range of an objective marker. Each time a Heretic Astartes model from the Word Bearers makes attack with a weapon fire, assault, or pistol weapon, a 4-5 scores an additional hit. So basically you get a 4 plus additional hit because it's combined with the one Massacre bonus. So it's for when you're rapid firing your guns, you basically have exploding 4 pluses. Which is really good, especially when you buy the Cursed Ammo upgrade as well uh, and get an additional AP. Fanatic Zealotry for 1 CP. You can reroll the charge rolls for that unit. Um, use a stratagem in your command phase, select one Word Bearer's Cultist unit from your army. Within 12 of a friendly Word Bearer's character unit, until the start of your next command phase, you can reroll charge rolls for that unit. Each shall model that unit makes a melee attack, you can reroll that attack's hit roll. So that's a neat uh, Cultist unit to jack them up a little bit. Now, it would be really good on the mutated ones. So with the mutated Cultists, you're looking at... Really, there's a bunch of bodies carrying in the Torments, right? But they're a Cultist unit, so... You're, you're now getting reroll charges for these guys, and when they make a melee attack, reroll the hits. Because they only hit on four pluses, but they're strength five, and their hideous mutation does minus two, two damage. So, yeah, rerolling the hit roll is real important. Revered hosts for two CPs. You strategy in the fight phase when a word bearer's demon unit from your army selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, you can reroll a wound roll. So you could use that on Demon Prince, but you could sure use that on Possessed. Oh boy, with their hideous mutations, they're all basically greater Possessed now, so strength 5. And then you'd be minus 2-2 two, two damage, rerolling the hit uh, wound rolls. Because you're already hitting on 3s, but 5 wounds almost everything in the game on 5s. So if you need to take a Knight down, go Revered Hosts, go reroll the wound rolls with your 5-2-2 uh, two, two damage attacks. <laughs> and watch the, the legs start coming off the Knights. Then you got Vengeance from Anakia, which is, you know, their homeworld that was destroyed, if you're not hip to the lore. Uh, you strategy in the fight phase when a word bearer's unit from your army is selected to fight. Um, you, until the end of the phase, each time a heretic Astraeus model from that unit makes a melee attack against an ultramarine unit, or against a unit from a successor chapter, reroll the hit roll and the wound roll. So, your ultramarines, they, they, they wrecked my, their home planet, basically, and now we're mad and we're out for vengeance. It's situational, but for 1CP it's pretty cool.
Dark Pack for one CP, using the any phase when a word bearer's infantry character model from your army is destroyed. Instead of using any other rules that are triggered when they're destroyed, you can choose to make a Dark Pact. If you do so, mark their position in the battlefield, uh, and then at the end of the phase, roll a d6 and a 4 plus, set them back up on the battlefield as close as possible to the position you marked and not within engagement range of the enemy, with d3 wounds remaining. Uh, each model can only be selected for the strategy once per battle. But basically, it's one CP to have all your heroes on a 4 plus and not be dead. And when you have like baby priests and master possession and stuff like that as your core hero core, like that's really handy. <laughs> and you might be swimming in CPs too from getting them back from doing actions. So just having the backup basically of the guy you want exalting their gods every turn come back to life. It's only a four plus, but it's still super cool. Just as an ability for one CP, it's cheap. It's worth a try. If it was two, I wouldn't do it, but because it's only worth one, I think it's, it's worth fishing for it. Malevolent Covenant for one or two. Using your psychic phase when a word bearer's psyker unit from your army fails a psychic test. You can choose for that psyker to suffer a mortal wound, and if you do so, the strats cost one CP, otherwise it costs two. Uh, in either case, the test is considered to have been passed with the minimum required warp charge roll and without uh, double having been rolled and can't be denied by denying the witch tests. Apostle of the Dark Council for one CP. Use a strategy uh, before the battle, before when you're mustering your army. If your warlord has the word bearer's keyword, select one word bearer's priest model in your army. Give them plus one leadership, and the priest gains the following ability. Dark Council, each time this model chants a prayer, you can reroll the dice to determine if it's heard. Yeah. You're always taking that with word bearers. You're going to take a Dark Apostle, you're going to give them a three plus um, rerolling prayer. But you can do it twice in, in uh, Strike Force games, which is cool. And then Hexagramic Ward for one. Use strategy in any phase when an attack is allocated to a word bearer's model from your army. The damage characteristic of the attack is changed to zero. You can only use a strategy once unless you're playing a Strike Force game, which you can use it twice. So you just get a, like a, a twice per game for one CP. It's just damage zero. Just to a word bearer model. You just hit me with your, I don't know, let's say Volcano Cannon. Just one CP. No, you didn't. Or hit them with, uh, you know, the, the the big knight hits them with the harpoon and it's damage 11. You're like, no, you didn't. Damage is zero. Just walks away from it. Doesn't help against mortal wounds, obviously, but uh, that's pretty cool. So I think between Dark Pact and Hexagramic Ward, you have some really trolly stuff. And that's kind of fitting for word bearers. I appreciate the fact that, like, they just have these, like, no, you didn't <laughs> abilities. And then your relics, the 8 4 of the Cursed Crozius uh, for a Crozius, a Cursed Crozius or Power Maul. So you can basically give it to your Chaos Lord if you gave him a Power Maul. You can give it to your Terminator Squad. I don't think you can give them a Power Maul actually anymore. Um, you can give it to a Chosen. You can give it to a Dark Apostle, obviously. You can give it to. I think that's it. I think that's the only people that can have Mauls. I wonder if the... I know the Master Possession gets his Staff Possession, so he doesn't get a Power Maul. Yeah, but that's a that's a very cool upgrade for plus 2 Strength, minus 2 to AP, and 3 damage. Uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon, the bear is a Priest model, and it targets not a monster or vehicle. If successful, it automatically wounds. So it's just you auto-wound anybody that's not a monster or vehicle. Crown of the Blasphemer. Uh, this relic can be given to Cultists, and you get a 4 plus invulnerable save. Models in the bear's unit, sorry have a 4 plus invulnerable save. And once per battle before making a saving throw for the bear, if uh, it can enhance this relic. If it does so, then until the end of the phase, models in the bear's unit have a 3 plus invulnerable save. So what's cool about that is you can give that to your dark commune, and the whole unit gets a 4 plus invulnerable save. Because they only have a 6 plus save normally. And you probably wouldn't use them, but in a word bearer's army you might, because they're basically like the, the church followers that you'd have. So these guys would all get 4 plus invuls, and once per game go to a 3 plus invul. And that's pretty cool. It's, it's, you know, you'd buy it as your extra relic probably, but I think it's neat. You can give it to Galdus. It's obviously what it's for. Malefic Tome. It's for word bearer Psyker only. You know an additional psych power uh, from one of your disciplines, and each time the bearer manifests psych test, you add plus one to your roll. The Epistle of Lorgar for a priest. You know additional prayer, and in your command phase, the bearer is on the battlefield, you can chant an additional prayer. That's a very, I mean, you're going to take that one probably every single time, because you're going to lean into being able to re-roll, uh, either re-roll your, your stuff or get extra ones. The Ashen Axe, so a Power Axe, Exalted Power Axe, Demonic Axe, Axe of Dismemberment, or a Cursed Weapon only, so your Executioner can take this. It's plus 2, minus 3, 2 damage, and each time the bearer fights, if any enemy models are destroyed as a result of an attack with this weapon, roll 2d6. 
If the result equals or exceeds the leadership characteristic of the destroyed model's unit, any until the end of the battle, that unit cannot advance or fall back, and that unit's not eligible to fight in the fight phase until after everybody else does so. He makes an example out of that guy. So, like, he just executes a model, and if you roll higher than their strength, those guys are so scared by it, you can't advance or fall back, and you're not eligible to fight until you're last for the rest of the game. That's a trolley ability. I don't know how often it would come into hand, like handy. Like, if you're playing Custodes, it's just never going to work, right? If you're box cars to fail. Um, but if you're playing, like, you know, someone with a relatively low leadership, even Marines with seven or eight, you could spike dice and make them fight last for the rest of the game. The Armor Diabolus uh, bears a 2 plus save. Each time the enemy shoots or fights, uh, and the bearer selected as a target. After it finishes making their attacks, roll a d6 for each wound the bearer's lost. For each 4 plus, the attacking unit takes a mortal wound. And if the bear was destroyed before moving it from play, roll a d6 and a 4 plus, they take d3 mortal wounds. And then the Baleful Icon. The bearer has the following ability. While a friendly word bearer's infantry unit from the army is within 6 of the bearer, uh, each time a, bear, a, a melee attack is made against that unit, your opponent cannot reroll the hit roll, cannot reroll the wound roll, and cannot reroll the damage roll. So it just makes you, makes you tougher, basically. I'm not sure who's a good icon bearer for that. Probably the Dark Commune, because they have icon on the icon arc, obviously. Uh, who else has icon? Not really anybody that I can think of. The Sorcerer's not an icon. All these carrying a big icon stick. <laughs> um... Master Possession? No, he's Warp Locust, not Icon. I think that's really it. I think you're just giving that to the Iconarch. I can't think of anybody else. Although I guess you could give it to, no, because you can't give a Relic to a regular Space Marine. Because the regular Space Marines don't carry Icons anymore, I don't think. Legionnaires? They used to. They do in Kill Team. Uh, Billfire Tome is what you can have now. Oh, you can have a Chaos Icon. There you go. All right, and that's it. So we're looking at Night Lords next, and we are basically looking at a, a, a short range prayer based. Let's look at the prayers right now Force and the Word Bearers. Um, they can jack up your priests. Now, there are some really good prayers in this list, and being able to reroll the chant for a 3 plus and also have extra ones is going to give you a bunch of like unit buffs. Ma the, the possessed obviously are, are supposed to be used in this list too. Um, and being able to thing do things like either jack up the priest themselves with omen of potency for plus three attacks, and your ren goes up by two, your AP goes up by two. Um, but being safe with illusory supplications, if you're trying to hold the middle of the table, you can have your big legion core unit now have one to threes automatically hit or fail to hit and can't be re-rolled. So, <laughs> What's better than transhuman physiology? Not getting hit at all, <laughs> which is nice. So you can just like prey on your big fat Terminator squad or your possessed, basically they're sitting in the middle battlefield, holding that center so you can do your defilement and then make them um, be missed on one to three and no rerolls against them. Uh, you can also benediction of darkness and have everybody holy within six of the priest um, be in cover. Right, so you could do the double prayers thing on somebody and then just go benediction of darkness, illusory supplication and hold the middle and be safe, uh, and then if you want during your turn you can also jack yourself up, but I feel like those two prayers over and over again are going to be the two that you're always going to do, because they can't be stopped, right, there's no dispelling them, and then hold the middle while you're doing that action over and over, yeah. And then you're, you're, you've got that trolley 4 plus come back to life. So even though you have like baby heroes, you don't have like some big super jacked up hero. You can just dive into infantry and possessed and cultists. You have some abilities to push the cultists around and take the flanks and stuff. And then just, you get one lord. So do a chaos lord, do a dark apostle, and do a master possession as your three HQs. Or even take a dark commune. You know what I mean? Do a dark commune or two dark apostles and a dark commune. Or a master possession and two dark apostles. Oh, and I forgot, the Dark Com Commune can pray as well, which is even better. So you have, uh, in your command phase, you can attempt to chant one prayer that hasn't been done already. Each time a prayer uh, is chanted by this unit's cult demagogue, and it's heard, measure the distance from the cult demagogue model. So yeah, so you've got the ability to like pray, pray with the Dark Apostle, give them the invul save, buy extra relics, and then take yourself a uh, Master Possession as your last one, so you have a Sorcerer. Because he can manifest two and deny one. So he can do the action every turn, manifest two, deny one. 
and still be doing that thing in the middle of the table. So a neat, a neat different sort of type of army. But uh, after this, we're going to look at the Scare Masters themselves, the Night Lords, as our next little GMG review. So anyway, big thanks for watching. We'll break down the next one, which you can either watch today or at your leisure. Till then, I'm Ash. I forget me. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.